Hey guys, welcome back to another VOD review. We're going to be talking about the San Francisco Shock taking on the New York Excelsior in this one. Uh, the San Francisco Shock have been dominant in the opening two weekends, not dropping a single match and looking good doing it. Uh, they have 83% of their team is rookies. The only remaining player from previous seasons is Violet, who has moved to the main support. So can he really even count as a new player? He, he's reborn in my eyes. Uh, his, his Lucio is looking much better. His uh, main support seems like he's put a lot of work into it, but we haven't seen the Shock really be tested at this point. Uh, all the other rookies coming in have been very impressive. Proper impressed a lot of people who were doubters. There were so many people who were like, I don't think Proper's going to be very good. My Everyone's saying Proper's going to be rookie of the year. I think he's going to underperform compared to expectation. Well, you're wrong, okay? Proper is great, and he is one of the best players in the world right now, and he's showing why. His versatility on all the heroes, his stats on everything. If you still think Proper isn't very good, you're just being loud and contrarian for the sake of being contrarian. He's, he's being great. The person that I think impressed a lot of people who we weren't as high on is Finn. I think Finn's had a very good showing on the flex port, especially on that Ana. I think he's probably been the best performing Ana throughout the first two weekends. Uh, once again, they haven't been tested too much yet, so I don't think he's been put under pr true pressure. But hey, if he's, if he's banging when they're owning, hopefully he's banging when they're losing. Um... Everyone else has been performing to a pretty good degree. Uh, Sam has been good when he's come into play. You can sort of understand what they're doing with their DPS rotation. Killer comes in to play the hit scan, being very good at it. Sam comes in when they want to play proper and a flex DPS. So it makes a lot of sense. Um, Sam only plays one match uh, map in this series, and I think that's the one they lose, unfortunately. But uh, Sam has been good uh, from what we've seen from so far. And Kaluj on the main tank, I think, has impressed a lot of people. An off-tank player, but has played a lot of Winston. Uh, there's a lot of teams that have been avoiding that transition of their off-tank player playing Winston. I talk about teams like, uh, you know, Hanbin for the Dallas Fuel. He played a little bit of Winston. Um, you know, uh, Piggy for the Houston Outlaws hasn't really tried. To, they haven't wanted to pick up the Winston. So Kuj has been doing a good job. But once again, we'll put that slight little bit of shade onto it. They haven't really been tested. Their only good team that they've played so far in their series has been the Houston Outlaws. So we need to uh, we need to keep take it all with a grain of salt. But they did bo booty bop the Houston Outlaws. So, you know, that's nice. New York Excelsior, on the other hand, has the opposite problem. Uh, they're a team that we actually let's get this VOD started while we talk about this as well. Um, they've had the uh, wait for pause pin. New York Excelsior, San Francisco Shock. Very important to talk about this. But let's talk about this. What the fuck is this? What, what am I looking at? You can tell. Look at Matt. He knows what he's doing. This is, the, this is a shit-eating grin under that, that, that thing. He's like wearing a kangaroo onesie without the hood or, or some... It's like a teddy bear, but like the no, we have the teddy bear at home and it's just Matt sitting there. It's awful. I, I personally think he might have been trying to do a Hugo cosplay, who is his dog. Um... What is this? <laughs> you can't say that this isn't true. Look at it. This is pretty, it's the same thing. They're, they're two of the same photos. I don't know what Matt was doing. Matt's just off the goop. Matt's just a shit poster at this point. He's an Overwatch League shit poster on Plat Chat. Even on the Overwatch League broadcast, he's just shit posting the whole time. But here we are. You know, this, this is the world we're living in, for better or for worse. So let's talk about New York Excelsior, though, and get the match starting and moving. New York Excelsior has had the opposite problem with the San Francisco Shock. I think they've, uh, I, I think they've had good moments, but they've had very hard schedule. They played, uh, who are the teams that they've played against? I want to say the Atlanta Reign, San Francisco Shock. They beat the Vancouver Titans. And they lost to, who's the other, Houston? Someone, someone able to fact check me on this one? Glads. They lost to the Glads as well. Um, so they, they've had, they've been taking a maps off here and there. Uh, let me pull it up actually just for, um, to, so I can be sure about this. So they, 
Uh, they lost 3-1 to the Gladiators, 3-0 to Atlanta Reign. That match wasn't close. They lost 3-1 to the Shock here, and they beat the Vancouver Titans 3-1 as well. So they have not looked great in their matches, and I think they've under uh, underperformed to some people's expectations. I was sort of coming in expecting them to not be that great. Their just lack of flexibility is very apparent. But I don't think they're a 1-3 and three team. I think they, they have a lot of room to improve. Uh, I think Kellen, honestly, as much as he has been getting kind of owned at certain times, I think he's been performing well given the resources around him. Uh, Yaki and Flora haven't really lived up to that super high expectation. I like Yaki's been playing a lot of Echo. And in general, I haven't really liked the Echo um, for for the New York Excelsior. I, I would much prefer to see Yaki on the Tracer. And he seems to be avoiding Genji like the plague. I don't know why. Uh, Flora's had some good moments, but hasn't been super exciting. And the back line, I think, is where a lot of the issues are starting to stem. I think Myungbong hasn't had that same level of flex support impact that we've seen from these other flex supports. Just don't, you haven't seen those big biotic nades, those big sleeps as much as you have from other players. And Gangnam Jin has, has another player in the league who's been forced to make that transition from flex support to main support. And I think he's done it the worst so far. He has, he is on the worst team against the hardest co competition. So take that with a grain of salt, but Gangnam Jin has definitely not really felt comfortable or seemed comfortable on that role just yet. So those are the two previews for these teams coming into this match um, and what we know about them thus far. Expectations are that the San Francisco Shock are going to bop the New York Excelsior and that kind of does happen in this match. But I wanted to highlight both these teams because I don't think we've talked about either of these teams yet. Maybe we talked about the Shock in the opening weekend. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, there's a, there's a lot of things to, to come. Yaki didn't echo this week. Did he just get G Chaser? Did he? I could be wrong about it. Yeah, if he did that, then I like that more. Um, I, I I didn't like his Echo in the first week. He was one of the few people that were like hard picking. I think there is a time to play the Echo, but everywhere is not the time to play Echo. There is certain times against certain heroes. Like I don't hate it against the Zarya. Um, against a Doomfist, it can be fine, but I think you're just better off playing a Tracer. I, I think the biggest issue, in my opinion, with Echo is that I feel like if you don't get that space, if you don't have that space to dive bomb and dive effectively, then you kind of just like either get caught in the mid range, like pick, poking at people and not really doing a ton of damage, or you just die. So, uh, I like the I like the style. I will say I like the style. Other than the Yaki Echo, I like the style that New York Excelsior is playing. If they play Yaki Tracer, Flora Soldier, and Kellen Winston, then the Luciana in the back line. I like it. Yeah, like this is a good comp. And I think that they did seem to make improvements. We actually see Kellen play a little bit of Zyre in the King's Run. That is the map that they win. So I like the style that they're playing. I just think it hasn't come together for them. Uh, we're going to see a head-to-head -head here. Uh, mirror match on the Winston Soldier Tracer. Are maps only determined as soon as the game starts? Or is there a way to check them before the game? I don't believe there is a way that you guys can check them. I don't know if there's a public saying of what the maps are going to be. But the teams know the maps that are going to be chosen heading into the match. I'm not 100% sure, like, if it's publicly available. Ooh, Gangnam Jin potentially should have got punished for that. I think Proper's Tracer has been the best so far in the league. His Tracer... I think especially that's what's made a lot of people sit up and, you know, be like, oh, shit, maybe prop is the real deal. But I think he also, on Genji, he has the number one in a lot of categories on Genji. So that was a very slow first fight. That was a, that was a minute of going back and forth of just, like, poking at each other. <laughs> and then eventually Kaluz just dies. Zaya looks to be Shock's Kryptonite. It just sort of changes the way that you got to play the game. And Shock don't seem to have... You know, like, you say it's their Kryptonite, but they only lost one map against the New York Excelsior. And I feel like they got caught off guard. And I'll, I'll talk about that when we get to Kings Row. I generally don't think San Francisco Shock put their best foot forward to deal with it. Dude, this is nuts, by the way. Dude, Gangnam Jin gets rolled. Like, just think about it. This was a predictive nade. He's expecting Gangnam Jin to be here. Throws the nade... Look at this, throws the nade, hits it, hits the Lucio, gets the quick scope, and then gets the follow through knowing that the Lucio is going to disengage and gets the kill. Nasty, dude. Nasty. Would you say proper is better than Sam on all heroes? Yes. And that, that, that feels disrespectful to say to Sam, but hey, man, like, 
just from what we've seen so far, I, I genuinely think so. What would you say Sam's best heroes are? I would say like Sam's best heroes in the past, correct me if I'm wrong, has been like Genji Echo. And you know, he always supposed good Tracer, but I, I, from what we've seen so far this season proper, I think is better on all of those heroes. Doom, well, I guess Doom, like it doesn't really exist anymore. So, I, you know, it's, and, and that's not a slight against Sam, right? Don't let me get me wrong. That's not a slight against Sam. Proper's better than almost everyone in the league. The only players that I think could really hold a candle to him thus far, well, not hold a candle to him, who are better than him on a lot of these other heroes is like Fletter and Prophet. <laughs> so it's a cool club to be in uh, if you're in that. Lip, Lip doesn't really play those heroes as much. I'm talking about like sort of, and Leave, Leave, and Kevster, yeah. Leave, Kevster, if, if I was saying the five best flex DPS players in the league, it would be, it would be Fletter, Fletter, Proper, Leave, Kevster, not Carpe. Ka Carpe, Carpe used to be in the, in that, in that squad, but he's not anymore. Pelican, I, I'm not, Pelican and AK are on the cusp, you know? Obviously, I, I, obviously Pelican's great, but I, he, for me, he's still not in that club. And same thing for uh, Decay. Decay needs... Yes, Decay, but I don't know. Something feels weird about having Decay in that list. Sparkle's not in that list either. I'm sorry. You know, we can't just invite all of our favorite players to things. There's, a, there's a players that are just below them, and you guys are naming them, but for me, those are the five. IDDQD. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, he, he's also not in that list. But I'm also not going to put him close to that list. <laughs> Everyone who's upset at Custer, I'll agree with you. Love me. What? Johnny's just trying to take the scraps. <laughs> Whatever Custer said, I disagree with. If you disagree with that as well, <laughs> follow me. <laughs> So the San Francisco Shock end up getting this uh, checkpoint, which is a big deal. Kaluz really is just getting booty buffed by some of this damage. I have posted you some mayhem. It is on my uh, YouTube channel. How's Kaluz played on this season? I think Kaluz has been good. Like I, I think Kaluz has been really good. Some people are saying that like Kaluz is like early Brook of the Year. Same thing with Reiner. I'm hesitant about talking about those kind of players to this, that pedigree yet, because those, I, I think it's important to keep in mind when you talk about these kind of players like Kaluj and Reiner, they have some of the best support systems around them that are tested and proven and all that kind of, like these are, these are like incredible players around them. So you need to, they're always going to look good when they first step into the league. I'm not saying these players are bad, but I need to see more from them. I need to see, I want to see them in the playoffs. That's like, Kickoff clash playoffs, when we see the both all these players play and these teams play against each other for titles and stuff like that, that's when you'll see the real the real players stand up and the real best players stand up. And that's what I'm waiting for. Because right now, like the shock of literally just beating beating up on the weaker teams in the league. Of course Kaluja is looking pretty good. You know, they're they're absolutely farming. I mean, to be fair, Muse looked not great early on as a rookie tank, and yeah, but and I still hold that against him, right? So it's one of the reasons I wasn't happy with the Muse signing for Toronto, but I think Muse has been looking very good uh, for Toronto this year. Glad's vs. Shock, yeah, Glad's vs. Shock is this weekend, right? Like, we can get to test both of those players. Um... Why did he leave there? Can someone explain to me why he jumped in and then left? He popped Primal. He wasn't close to dying. Is he trying to dodge the sleep? But he like, by doing that, he ended up just like mitigating his own Primal. I guess he forces B. Not that bad. I don't know, Custer. You're a coach. I'm not a coach. Oh, Killer goes down. Honestly, like, New York has been playing pretty well in this match. That was an enormous purple, by the way, from Finn. Dude, Finn loves to play these aggressive anal angles. Look at where Finn is. 
Right? Like, most Annas like to play back. Look at Finn. Finn is behind Kellen here, by the way. Like, that knee that he's about to hit is because he's standing in the opposition team. Pretty sure Finn's... This is Finn? Pretty sure this is Finn right here. Yeah. Like, he just loves to, to just walk into the opposition team, throw down a nade. It'll be interesting to see if he gets punished more as time goes on for this, this kind of play. Because, like, he's literally just in it. It's a crazy sound barrier by Gangnam Jin. It was good. Wasn't enough, though. But, like, that was an expensive fight by San Francisco Shock, right? They they beat it early to get the Primal, and then they Nano uh, nano Primal. Like, those are expensive ultimates, yeah. But I guess New York Excelsa also used their Nano. Who's going to punish him on the Diva? Diva's just not very good right now, because she just kind of gets rolled. Doesn't so much yet. Yeah, so much yet likes to play a very similar aggressive angle. And that, like... The, it, these are the kind of things that I think are important to note. It goes back to what I'm saying. It's like against weaker teams or teams that you're better than, it can look really good. It's think of Lee Jae Gun, Lee Jae Gon in the 2020 playoffs, right? We watched him pound the entire season, and then in the grand final, when it, or the semifinal, when it mattered most, he just got punished like super hard. I don't mind these aggressive plays and these aggressive angles and the aggressive styles, but. At some point, you need to know when you need to pull back, right? And that's what we need to keep an eye on for these rookie players who are, like, having these crazy pop-off moments and dominating against better teams, right? Like, it's... It's all fun and games until you get punished for it, right? Oh, my God. That clip did so much reputational damage. What? No, it's not even one clip. Like, the thing about that is, like, the Lee Jae gone on that, that semifinals, it wasn't just one play. Like, he... How many times did, did Lee Jae gone feed? Especially in that one map, the Oasis stands out to me. It was, like, four or five times where he went aggressive and just died for it. And it was like, just stop and you're, you you guys will be fine. Like, it was it was bad. Like, that was, he literally threw away a map. Um for the Shanghai Dragons, it felt like. Tracer Gap, proper does that to people. It's just, like, let's just appreciate the Tracer Duel again, by the way. This was... Because Yaki got the Mega as well. Like, it, the crazy thing to remember about this 1v1 is that Yaki also got the Mega. Oh, he almost won it. I remember super highlighting that issue. Yeah, it was it was it was bad. Like it was a bad play. The thing about shock is I trust Krusty to know that and make players do it correctly against better teams. I agree. Krusty is a great coach and like we have a lot of respect for him. But I said it in Plat Chan, I'll say it again. The San Francisco Shock were not well coached last year. I think they look very well coached this year. I feel like they've sort of last year was like them sort of I would say getting complacent in a way and getting cocky. And I feel like it feels like they're coming back down to earth. So I hope that, you know, Krusty is holding them on a shorter leash and is, you know, is is making sure that that shit doesn't happen again. And yeah, 9K is obviously back on the team as well, which helps. Last year they lost two of their coaches. Yeah, but you can't say you can't defend them by saying last year they lost two of their coaches, but then also on the other hand say Krusty will fix it, right? Like you can't say that they're reliant on their assistant coaches, but then also not talk about their assistant coaches in the same in the same breath. So I don't expect that to happen again for the San Francisco shock. I don't see Krusty making that mistake again and sort of having those issues. Um it feels like everything seems a lot more thought out, and I like what they're doing with their roster so far. But, you know, I think their subbing strategy of they have their core five, and then, you know, Sam comes in when they need the flex DPS, I think is a perfect way of how you should control this team. Dude, Violet was just feeling himself a little bit there. Good beat by Gangnam Jin, but a better beat by Violet. Like, actually, what was... The, I say that it's a good beat by Gangnam Jin. I don't think, like... I think this is potentially one of New York Excelsior's biggest issues right now. I think their ultimate usage is just questionable. 
Like, look at this nano. They just like nano flora for like Step on to deal with Kaluj. And then like, he doesn't really get anything done. And then they just like, I don't really know why this beat was necessary. It doesn't feel like they were ready for this beat. Like what? 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 A, what? About like you, you've seen the boostio coming out. You know that not much is happening, and then they just beat to counter it. Like Kellen wasn't that low. He's still at like two thirds health. Like it felt like a very bad beat. And what happens here is because they beat, it forces the New York Excelsior to walk forward, and then all Violet has to do is just be like, okay, I'm gonna beat two seconds later. Counter beats, and then all of a sudden they lose the fight for almost free, right? So I, I think. Just some weird usage by the by uh, New York Excelsior. Crossy said in the Aftershock episode that they're intentionally running a small roster this season for better cohesion, and that's how it should be, right? Like teams, that is how it should be. That's what we've learned, and that's why I have problems with. Uh, that's why I have problems with uh, what Boston Uprising are doing. I think historically, smaller rosters have always proven to be more successful, uh, in general. Yo, Jaws, thank you very much for the raid. What is up, party people? Daily Tiger, thank you for the eight months as well. You know, we kind of talked about this San Francisco team in, in the is it generally better to beat second? Absolutely, right? Like, if you can beat second, um, then you're in an advantage, right? You have longer time of being invulnerable. In that particular history play out. Last year, though, a little bit muted from them. So I'm pretty sure they're hoping to, uh, to really come out with a bang here. Aside from the shock, who seem to be the only ones to make a larger roster work? There's never a question. Uh, over this team about how much talent I don't know and that's the thing is I don't think there are many teams that have ever had high level deep roster with a lot of subbing strategy and ever made it work I think there have been a lot of teams that have shot themselves in the foot trying to make it work Titans what Titans what do you think so far Matt uh, I, I think it's been Vancouver Titans in 2019 only played the six players ever Unless you're talking about in the grand finals when they decided to take Bumper out and play, uh, fuck, what even was his name? And then they got 4 0 Tizzy. <laughs> Fusion 2020. I don't think Fusion had it played a deep roster in 2020, did they? Didn't season one MYXL have a massive roster? Yeah, but they didn't use it, right? Like, if you think about 2018 uh, New York Excelsior, I think if anything, that's a prime example of what not to do. Like, MYXL only ever subbed in Pine. Uh, and then they shot themselves in the foot when they were subbing out Ark and Animo. Like, when they started subbing Ark and Animo, that's when that team started going to shit. And when they were playing Janus as well, like, they would play Janus every now and then, and Janus looked like shit. Like, 2018 New York Excelsior is a prime example of why you shouldn't do that. If they had just played Mano, Mecco, Jonak, Ark, um, and then played Libero, Sabiolbi everywhere, and then maybe play Pine if they wanted to play Widow, that would have been perfect, right? Not really. Hunters until they ran out of money, but I think Hunter's subbing strategy also hurt them. Like, I, I think they were subbing such an unnecessarily amount of times. Literally, they could have played any of their six uh, players and they would have been fine. For some reason, they like to sub in Nisha and Yveltal. And I know there is minute reasons of why they play, oh, this one's better than Brig and this one's better at Mercy. It literally didn't matter. If they just played one all the time, they would. I think they would have been better. Has the kind of angle where he can really punish yeah, the only, and the only team that's ever made the subbing strategy work is the 2019 Shock. But I also think the 2019 Shock had an anomaly of riches. They had... They had, uh, sorry, and 2020 shock uh, as well. That, that shock, I think. They had Striker Smurf just sitting on the bench to play Winston Tracer whenever they wanted to do it. It's like, not everyone has Striker Smurf just sitting on the bench to play dive whenever they want to do it. So two of the four championship uh, champions? What do you mean two of the four champions? Who's the other one who did it? It's only shock. And if you're gonna, if you, like, and that roster was just su super deep. Like, you, you can't, they're, they're like a, an anomaly, which were only so good because they had so much talent. Like, I can give you 20 other examples of when it didn't work, if you want to just take the championships, because obviously the people that, like, other people that did it, 
didn't have success. <laughs> So we get the Kilo Widow here. Kilo Widow is nasty. The counting shock twice. Yeah, yeah. I realized that after. Get back towards some of his supports is uh, not going to make it. He's going to get traded out real fast. But Violet will be able to keep the payload moving. Here goes Yaki again, Matt. Three final blows, one death for him. Really looking to go big in that first fight, and he does. New York, if they can get back in time, Matt, they're pretty well positioned ultimate wise. All right. So NYXL is going to play Nano Blade. Kilo switches off the Widow. Like, I, I think. I don't know if I like the Widow on attack here. I like the Widow on defense because I feel like you... Oh, nice sleep by Finn. That's such an important sleep. That was the... Wait, why? They nanoed Gangnam Jin? Did they nano Gangnam Jin to save him? Oh, Gangnam Jin got slept. It w Actually, the nano wasn't bad. Gangnam Jin would have died. I don't hate the nano because it also mitigates the blade or the nano blade of proper. So it's... Oh, never mind. He's dead. Um... But I, I don't hate the Nano. I think it makes sense. I think if they just... If Myeongbong just lets Gangnam Jin die and then Myeongbong dies as well, they're going to lose the fight regardless. So I think Nanoing... Maybe if you Nano the Visor, you hope that you can kill everyone else, but... He does stay alive, but never gets the rally. They're able to deal with Myeongbong rather quickly, so... That means Gangnam Jin deflect slept Myeongbong because Finn slept Flora. Oh, you're actually right. I didn't even think about that. Finn sleeps... Flora. So that means that never mind. Myeongbong only nano Gangnam Jin because he felt bad. Yeah, because Gangnam Jin gets slept. <laughs> That's so true. That means that Myeongbong must have slept Gangnam Jin. So he just felt bad. Oh, okay, I'm not defending that any Myeong anymore, Myeongbong. You did it to yourself. That's a good catch. That's a good catch. stay alive but never gets the rally uh, they're able to deal with Myeongbong rather quickly so they should put the shock over the line They'll take that was four ults by MYXL as well to try and hold that fight and they lost it while the shock used three four I guess they used four of their own actually because I think Kaluja is the primal Sorry, as let everybody have a special soda. <laughs> Here, take this and we'll call it even. Oh, this is actually sick by Finn. Finn actually kills Myeongbong there, but it gets slept. And then gets executed by Yaki. Honestly, you take you take that as the attacking team because that's I that's way better for you because you're pushing the card anyway. So Myeongbong's gonna take longer to get back. Will pros be able to stream themselves playing Overwatch 2 Quick Play still? Who's uh, who's playing Overwatch 2 Quick Play? If the bait is down. Yeah, just how long can you hold this high ground? You know there's a Winston at large. Taking a bit of poke damage. It's a great angle though. People. It's a great angle though from Flora, right? As much as they have, uh, they have, uh... Upwards towards that yeah, do, pros always have access, but who do they play against? <laughs> See the way the I, if you think all the pros are queuing up, they're not, because they're just going to get crazy queue times. Maybe they'll run their own internal pugs. I think that would be cool, and that's what they should do, but... Nano Visor, pretty good. Stream the pugs? No, I don't think the pros are actually running internal pugs. I think they're just complaining about competitive on Twitter instead. Beat Blade. Are the pros allowed to stream their version of Overwatch 2? I'm not sure. But as I said, what, what are they going to stream? Like, it, maybe they could stream the pro pugs. They'd have to go through the uh, the league and that kind of stuff, but we'll see. Pug equals private user game? No, pug means pickup game. Do you think Shoko would be good on Super in this thing? Yeah. Yeah, like, so Super, like, Super is a great player. Super didn't retire because he wasn't going to be good enough. No, I don't think anyone doubts that Super could have been good enough. 
Shock versus Glads, who wins in your opinion? My bet is on the San Francisco Shock. It's hard to it's hard to put my faith in the Houston, uh, after, uh, in the Gladiators after they uh, they dropped the spaghetti against the well they didn't really super drop the spaghetti but they uh, after their loss against Dallas Fuel. Nanavisor, pretty good ultimate round two. Why Brig over Lucio on D here? Um, Brig is really good at controlling high grounds, so the Winston becomes almost impossible to play when you're playing against a Brig because of the whip shots. Uh, it's just as Brig as a Lucio right? Like, what are you gonna do as Lucio on the high ground, right? You may as well play a Brig and you have the whip shot and anyone who gets close, you can just push around. Um, so Brig in general gets more ne uh, value and you don't really, you're not looking to speed boost anywhere as the defensive team. So there's no real necessity to play the Lucio. Isn't Shock just O2 Blast? Yeah, a lot of O2 Blast. Meow Mong is playing the safest angle he can. Yeah, Meow Mong is a very safe Ana in comparison when you're talking about like Finn and stuff like that, right? Uh, see, Gangnam didn't miss the whip there. He really needed to hit that on Kalouj. Uh, not a great primal by Kalouj. Proper though. Proper gets nanoed. Good play by Gangnam Jin. Yeah, Gangnam Jin is just in fucking Narnia now. He rallies to get back to the point. The shock's like, ah, uh, there's a rally brig behind us. So Gangnam Jin's actually gonna get out. That was actually a pretty good play by Gangnam Jin because he can't die there. They need to nano. Oh, I think they should have nanoed the soldier. I don't know if it's gonna work on Kellen. I feel like they can just peel quite well against Kellen. Oh, Finn missed the sleep. Oh, good beat by Violet to count to save Finn. After that sleep was mess uh, missed, he needs to do it. So pretty good primal by Kellen. But that was nano primal to just force out beat, right? So all of a sudden they have nothing to they have nothing to go aggressive. So now all of a sudden the shock are playing for almost free. They use the rally. And I think this is the big difference with oh wow. Between oh he got woken up. That was a good slip by uh, Meow Mong. I think this is the big difference between MYXL and Shock right now. It feels like MYXL are, are using their ults to kind of just continue to exist rather than closing out fights, right? They use nano, they use the primal. And they just didn't really close anything. They used the rally to just stay alive. Didn't feel like they were ever taking initiative. Violet Lucio is actually impressive now, wild. Well, no, I don't think anyone ever doubted that Violet would be able to get good at Lucio. Like last year, the biggest complaints about his Lucio was that it was very obvious he hadn't spent time practicing it and he didn't have a lot of experience on it. He's a talented player. He, he can, Violet can play anything. If he if he puts enough time and effort into it, right? So, and I think it looks like he's put his best time and effort into it. I don't think he's the best Lucio we have in the league, but he's, he looks solid thus far. How many times do they wake up bleeding proper? Yeah, it. Yeah, they they just you got to be careful about that. You get like some teams are really good at it, and some teams are really bad. Uh, who was the team that was really bad with it recently? Was it Vancouver? One of the teams was just like kept waking them up. I think it was Vancouver, where every slip they got hit, it just got woken up. He's playing Land and Lucio. Yeah, he's hitting the ground, Lucio. Oh, this is the oh, this is the deflected uh, reflect. I didn't actually catch that when I watched it. Good one, Myeonbong. Balls kept zip zapping him. Yeah, Proper's game sense is so good, yeah. And, and that's the thing is, I think that people underrate about Proper's gameplay as well. Like Proper, yeah, he I as much as he, he doesn't get these big multi frags all the time. But when was the last time you saw Proper die first, or like just get punished really hard for trying to do something? Like I feel like Proper just plays clean. Like he's just always offering a lot while never really getting punished for it as well. And twice Vancouver's Lucio shots, they're already shots, yeah. But like, at the Overwatch League level, like, the Ana should be calling. Like, I'm gonna sleep. Like, if, if, as soon as you hear the, the blade of the primal goes out, it's you, it should be called, I'm gonna sleep. And that you, like, people should be aware that that's gonna come out and you shouldn't be shooting. We're not playing ranked anymore, where it's like, oops, I was shooting him. Like, obviously, people are going to be shooting it every now and then, but especially for the big ones. Ah, oh, boy! Uh, especially for the big ones, like uh, Blades and Primals. Um, especially for the Blades and the Primals, it should be getting cold. 
now by Kilo when Lissy grapples up, so pretty powerful spot for the attackers to take. Yeah, and you got a uh, Violet now on the break here. Uh, Pop has only played bad teams, yeah. Oh yeah, and I, I, I keep saying that, right? But that doesn't change the fact that he still has been dominant, right? I, what, what is the point you're trying to make that he has only played bad teams? Does it invalidate any of my points? You missed the kilo shot? No, we, we just caught that. It's, it's fucking nasty. We've seen, I, if you haven't seen it, we can go back. Oh! Flora getting put in the ground. Yeah, Flora tried to reposition because he, you know, Kalush took a fight in a spot with Flora. I feel like Widows don't do a whole lot because they have to play passive here. I don't like Widow on attack. I don't like Widow on uh, attack Dorado, and I don't like Widow on defense Gibraltar. I don't mind Widow on attack Gibraltar if you're confident in your Widow's ability to, like, herd the space and you play around it well. But in general, I don't think Widow's got great effectiveness in our unless you're Happy or Arns or Kilo. Uh, with the Widowmaker and kind of the composition that... Uh I don't think he's the best DPS. Well, I'm, I don't think anyone... Anyone who's saying that he's the MVP right now is ridiculous. We're two weeks into the league. Yeah. He tries to dive. Bubbles early because he's so afraid of the sleep dart. And this horse is standing it while he looks for something to get close enough to. Gets proper though. How does he respond to this? Kellen gets proper? Well, there you go. I talk shit. I say proper never dies first. And then proper goes on and dies first. We haven't even seen APAC play. Yeah, exactly right. He's played four of this year's 24 matches. Yeah, there's 24 regular season matches. That's not even including playoffs and stuff like that. Bo, you're just... It's a lot right now, okay? Good primal by Kellen. And that's this is what I keep saying. Like, Kellen's been playing pretty well. Like, I actually think Kellen's been doing well with what he's got thus far. Um... Like, even the times in which he dies, it really just feels like he's just not getting the support he needs. Like, it feels like Kellen is doing his job. And that's that's the important thing that I'm looking at. Like, I, Flora needs to switch off Widow, right? We, we literally saw... We saw... Um, like, Flora, if Flora just went Tracer, right? Like, even Tracer here. Flora is just getting dumpstered on the Widow. And he's just, like, hard forcing it. He's better off just going Tracer and just trying to dive it more effectively than trying to beat it head on. Because they're just going to lose trying to take this Ego duel. like on the 76 or the Widowmaker just like any of the hits Meowbong is invisible yeah well Meowbong's just not really having the like it, it, it's what I said at the start of this review Meowbong's impact you just don't see it the only time I've seen Meowbong's impact this entire he got one good sleep on the first map and he got another good sleep on Dorado against his own teammate on Gangnam Jin those are the two things that I've noticed Meowbong really do this series <laughs> he's just like like compare that to Finn who's hit a couple of really big nades he's had big sleeps He's had good moments. Like, we just... I feel like we're not seeing that out of Myeongbong. So, Flora went to Tracer like I said he should, which is cool. Making the right read. Hopefully, it's not a little too late. Nice blade by Yaki. Yeah, you, you just take that, right? Like, the break's gonna run away from you. You take that. Take the one. Clay. Would I allow a team to win both Rookie of the Year and MVP? I don't know if they would be like, if he wins MVP, he like invalidates his Rookie of the Year candidacy. I feel like that's probably how it should be. Like, I think they shouldn't win both. If anything, if someone wins MVP, they should, cut, they should, they should not be able to go for Rookie of the Year. Do you feel like Anna is the most impactful here in Overwatch 2? I think she has okay. definitely higher level impact. The most impact? I know, I think tanks are pretty important right now. It's hard to know. Where's Proper? Dude, Proper's just going for a, 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 a jog. He's back though, don't worry about it. You think Gangnam Jin should play the Anna? At this point, you cannot change it back. They have made the decision that Gangnam Jin will be the ma main support and Myeongbong will be the flex support. You can't go back on that. You're going to set yourself back months in the support role if that's happened. If they really want Gangnam Jin to go back to flex support, then they need to sign a new main support. That's the only way that I can see the, this that happening. Yeah. 
stuck, still gonna take the fight. I think Keller's doing uh, really well with what he's been given here. He's How's Violet's Brig? Violet's Brig is one of the reasons he's playing main support to begin with. He's He has a really good Brig. Um, that he, that's why he originally played uh, for the San Francisco Shock on the main support. But what ended up happening is that because he was playing the Brig, he ended up having to play Lucio every now and then. And that's where the, the floor Violet Lucio came from. And it's powerful because of how powerful the tanks are. Sleep, Nade, Nano, Pivotal. Yeah, it's just like, I think so much about the slade, uh, the Sleeps and the Nades and all that kind of stuff. Like, they are, they are so impactful and they are so important that you need to... Oh, that is just an ugly blade. Like, th this is like something that you don't see from these higher-end teams. Like, look at how much positioning they know they have. Like, why does Yucky think he's going to be able to close that distance? He forces this so hard. Violet uses the rally, I guess. I guess you trade it for the rally, but like, if you're gonna go for that, like, you you could. Shock were already giving them the respect, right? Here, why not just force Kalusia? Like, I feel like they should force Kalusia. If they play under here, if they're gonna give you this much, if Shock is gonna give you this much respect for the blade, Yaki should call that, and they should not force the dive onto the backline. Force Kalusia, get the point moving. Get the, get the point to here. So then when the San Francisco Shock decide to back away and they give the high ground, all of a sudden you have the card in a much better position and you have an advantage. Because engaging like this with the blade, yes, you force out the rally, but all that happens is you gain the high ground, right? But the card is so far away that the San Francisco Shock are just going to be able to reposition. And you're going to see that right here. They're all just going to walk back up the stairs or flank, holy fuck, or flank you through the lower and just kill your back line, right? Like... The shock literally played them like a fiddle there. Like they even like even though they force out the rally, the shock still got value out of the rally by just making that engage. Yeah, and get on the move with nine seconds left in the round. There will be a rally here for New York and a tackle by Can Flora bail them out again. Only two final blows since that 3k he scored in the previous Yeah, round. this is not looking good for MYXL. Oh, nicely by Miyama. <laughs> gets res there. It gets woken up again. Miyamox has a couple of good sleeps. I'll give him that. Like, because he had that one on Dorado as well. Yeah, they had the end of the third point. So Miyamox hitting the sleeps, I guess. Maybe we're just not seeing the fruits of his labor because they keep getting woken up. <laughs> Who's coaching MYXL these days? Kuki, yeah. Kuki is the head coach. I believe it's... I want to say it's Kuki and Undyne. Let me double check that. And why do I want to say Wizard Young as well? Or is he on Soul? Yeah, it's Kuki and Undyne. Where did Wizard Young go? Yeah, oh, he went to Washington. That's where Wizard Young went. I remember Wizard Young was back. But yeah, it's only Kuki and Undyne uh, for the MYXL. Which, only two coaches I'm not a fan of. You know me. You saw how they sort of put Flora in a position where he would deny that initial high ground hold from the Winston. He's on Soul as some coordinator? Wait, wait, wait. My, Ligopedia just said he went to Washington. Am I crazy? Substituting in here had a squeaky clean performance, I feel like, in week number one. With oh, no, he is at, he is at Seoul. Yo, so, look at Peter just lied to me. He is in Seoul. He is, he is at Seoul with head of strategy and data coach. It feels, like a, it feels like a weird role that you give to someone, and it sounds super important, but it's like... Just look at the numbers and tell us what you think. Yeah, I think it was because he got he moved to Washington, so it was. Yeah, yeah. Listen, head of strategy. <laughs> we should bench Decay. It is a dope title. It is a cool title. <clears throat> I can't even blame Bo for that one. That was a hundred percent me. I'm sorry. You saw how they sort of. With, uh, not a whole lot in that yeah. previous map, so. But it was Bo's fault that I had the keyboard on my desk. Soldier, Soldier Echo here. 
Uh, All right, so we have Sam coming in for the San Francisco Shock, and they're going to play the Soldier Echo. Uh, I think you should never take Proper out of the lineup. It just seems like they don't want to play Hitscan on this map. So I think they want the flexibility of Sam on the Echo. Sam is a great Echo, so it's not crazy. So this is the map that the San Francisco Shock lose. Hashtag spoilers. Um, Sam gets Myeongbong, clean dive by Collusion Sam so far. Like you can tell there's an obvious strategy there, they, right? They want to get control of top right, that allows them to fight the fight for the uh, for the defensive positioning, and then they step in. So just smart, clean play by the Shock so far. Why don't they play proper Kilo if they want to play Echo Soldier? It seems like they don't like Kilo Soldier that much. Or maybe they're just playing Sam for the sake of playing Sam. And that, that honestly could be it as well. Isn't this like multiple OT? It's not multiple OT rounds, but I think they both finish them out. At some point, I think on their attack, New York switches to the, uh, the Zaya strategy and it ends up working really well for them. They play kill, yeah, they, they play Killer Soldier. As I said, like, I don't know exactly the reason of why they like to play Sam. Like, they could easily get away with just playing proper Kilo everywhere. Maybe there's a reason that I'm not thinking of, but... That's a good nade to counter that. Gets Kellen killed, na mitigates the, the nano. Sick play by uh, Finn. They play him to play him, yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was just playing him to give him keep giving him reps in matches, which I honestly don't mind. Like, like they they I think they're fine to drop maps, and I think giving Sam experience in, in matches I think is super important because like as much as right now it might not make a ton of sense to play if we end up in like a Tracer Echo meta or something like that or a Tracer Genji meta, Sam's gonna need to play. So he needs to be ready for it to come in when if that happens. So I like it. And even though they lose this map, I don't think it's Sam's fault. No man, Sam died. It's his fault. And Proper died. Proper and Sam are the problems. Killer can play the Tracer? Yeah. Like, as I said, I think they're just flexing their roster. Uh, I think it's fine to do that, obviously. When push comes to shove, they're definitely gonna... We'll, we'll start to get a real idea once we start going into the playoffs, we get to see the playoffs kick off clash and every team is putting their best foot forward always. And there's more balance between the teams that we're going to be playing against each other. Then I think we'll get a real understanding of how these teams are running their rosters. Good coaching again. <laughs> well, they do that in crucial games and that's sort of the point I'm trying to make. What do we think of this beat by Gangnam Jin? Don't like this beat again. I feel like Gangnam Jin is way too itchy on the trigger with the beat. Like it doesn't, it doesn't really offer much. And then once again, it baits the entire New York Excelsior to move forward because of the beat. And then they end up getting absolutely giganated by Finn. So Gangnam Jin's baiting his team into going. Giga nated. It's the name for any time someone gets nated. At least three people nated. Everyone full health. Time to beat. Yeah, it feels like he's just baiting the, his team into an engage, and it's just a problem. There was nothing panic. Well, there was collusion in their face. Here's what I think. I think Gangnam Jin had collusion land in his face. And so he felt pressure from himself and he saw Kellen go in deep with that with his own jump And I think he just thought they needed it, but when they just very much didn't and What's the violet beat that also feels like a weird one. Oh Violet beats to save Sam I think but then Sam uses copy so this is a bad beat by violet as well and Sam loses Sam doesn't even get the beat uh, So he dies in his copy as well. So that not, also not a great beat by uh, Violet though. 
I wonder how much better MYXL would look if they had a decent main support and like Gangnam Gym play flex support. Obviously, that's not uh, that's not their only problem, but still, yeah, I I think that's an interesting point, right? Like, it, it goes back to what we oh nice visor. Uh, it goes back to what we talked about with um, you know, the biggest problems with MYXLs. They just don't have flexibility and they don't have depth. And I think, you know, when you don't have these players, you have these players with massive holes in their hero pools and you're not going to add any depth. Like, you know, for a team like San Francisco Shock, their players have such deep hero pools that it, they can get away with it. Um, like, we haven't even seen a situation, like, let's say we end up in a meta where, like, Sigma is meta, right? Let's say Sigma gets buffed in, like, the next patch. Can Kellen play Sigma at the level that he's going to need to? Like, I don't know. There's a bunch of flex support, here, uh, flex tank heroes that... These players are going to need to play. Oh, nice play by Sam. Top. It's fine. Shocker just rolling right now. Why in the world did MYXL not keep Gongwood even for even 50k? It's, it's kind of crazy that MYXL has such a bare bones roster. It really feels like they're working within a very high, uh, a very low budget capacity. Like, it doesn't feel like they have the money. They signed Vulcan. Like, what? Like, can someone explain to me why they signed Vulcan? Like, if they, I would, like, is he ever going to play? I don't, I don't know. Like, they, it, they have five Korean players who have never been on Western teams. Myungbong is the only player who has ever played on a Western team. They have five players who probably don't have very good English at all. They have a fully Korean coaching staff and management. When is Vulcan going to play? Like, how does that even make sense? This is it. Last chance for New York. This is a for the player. And that's it. If it's just for the player cap, what the fuck's up with that? Every little bit of... Uh... Again, we talked about Matt losing isn't necessarily learning, right? At least sign a Korean player. Like, is that screaming to me that they didn't even want to have to pay for the visa costs? So they just got an American player? Like, is that really the re Surely they can sign somebody from Korean contenders that would be good and then just bring him over. You never know when you need it. Would it not be impossible to get a Korean visa in a short time? Well, it doesn't even need... Like, even if they get a visa in three months, it's better than having a player that looks like they're never going to play. Right? And, you know, like, big ups to Vulcan. At least he'll be able to... He's collecting a bag. You know, he's getting at least 50k. Fuck it, get on him. But, you know, it's kind of weird. No, as I said, this is pure speculation. Do not take this and be like, the reason they didn't sign a Korean is because of visa costs. This is just speculation. I actually have no insight of to what's happening with NYXL, what's happening with their roster. I'm just discussing it from the outside looking in. So we're actually going to see MYXL uh, pivot into the Dallas Fuel comp of the Zaya Reaper. Uh, and they actually make it look pretty good. It's a, I think Zaya Reaper is a very strong comp and you're going to see more teams adopt it. Teams that I think are struggling to play the Dive or maybe some Doomfist, I would not be surprised if we see more of them go to this Zaya Reaper style. How good is the Violet Mercy? Uh, we haven't seen it in a hot minute. It's hard to know. Having Vulcan means the whole team will have to speak the English, right? Yeah, because like I don't think Vulcan knows Korean. That would be a that'd be a wild plot twist, but yeah, it, it's just a it's a very weird situation I think with the MYXL that I just don't really understand. So Vi goes down, MYXL do a pretty good job of splitting up the roster. Do you think this comp is actually good? Yeah, I think there are uh, I think there are ways around it, and there are certain ways that you can beat it. I think this comp is really good on maps like King's Row. In situations where there is no real high ground to contest, or, and you don't need high mobility, like there are some maps where you just need a Winston, or like something to get high ground, right? And you can't really play Zaya. But maps like this, where the Zaya can be the front line with the two bubbles, she's essentially the main tank that's just standing in the front, and if they try and dive you, you, um, you can bubble them. And then you also can play aggressive with your Reaper, who TPs in and you bubble them like Hanbin uh, and Edison do for the Dallas fuel so i think it makes a lot of sense um i think some teams haven't really worked out how to play it you know like the paris eternal but finn gets flora what's the problem bo there's a ping system for vulcan in overwatch too
So floor is dead with the visor. The nano's gone. So I want to have a look at this. So the nano's gone. It's whatever. Okay. You know, the, this isn't going to be your push. So then... They're going to visor aggress. Just... That's such a bad... Another really bad beat bite. You don't need to win that fight. Your spawn door is right there. Just save it for the next fight. Oh, I guess Sam overcommitted. I don't know why, how Sam got caught there. That was pretty bad. But... Yeah, another pretty bad beat. He's just more surprised they decided to beat. Uh, you're still gonna have to move this payload. Like around the surface, really, I think Gangnam Jim wanted to save Kellen's energy. Well, Kellen wasn't even the one that died. Well, I guess maybe Kellen would have died, but it is not worth saving energy, I don't think. It, energy decays so rapidly in, in Overwatch 2. Oh, good sleep. Meow Bong's actually had some good sleeps. I will give him that. Do teams like Outlaws come in English? Yeah. Almost, mo almost all mixed rosters communicate in English. At least predominantly. As far as I'm aware. Even like the Hongzhou Spark, wasn't there? Isn't it? I don't like the Guangzhou Charge and the Hongzhou Spark. I'm pretty sure they communicate in English as well. With their mixed rosters. What's wrong, Bo? Bo's freaking out. You guys hearing Bo? Just, I don't know what's what's wrong with Bo. He's just bored. Alright, Nano. Nano Visor. That was a good beat by Gangnam Jin. You take those. And like, you see how Kellen's playing? Like, this is how the Zaya really should be played. You're this frontliner where it's like, they don't want to shoot you because you can bubble at any moment, right? And if you save your bubbles effectively, then like... You, you just become this force in the front line and it gives you the rest of your team so much space. And if they decide to ignore you and run past you, then you have two bubbles for other people, right? Yeah, this is working. Uh, this is a what? Is what's, what's, the, what's wrong? Are you dying? Are you dying right now? I don't think you're dying. What's the problem? What's the problem? Huh? Come here. Bo is dying. He, he, it sounds like he's dying. Bo got evicted. He did. Never noticed the UI for these eye bubbles on a reticle? Yeah, it's really nice. It's like a really good way to keep track of the bubbles. Oh my god, Kellen almost died. Oh my god, that visor was almost really good. Oh, that's not a great grab by Kellen. Good bubble by Kaluj. I don't think it's going to matter. He's got so much charge. There you go. And, and this is what I wanted to talk about. Like, it doesn't look like shock. It doesn't seem like Shock know how they want to beat the Zaya. It feels like they want to just dive, but it feels like they're really struggling to get anything. Done. Like it, it's such a weird, it's such a weird thing that it feels like. I don't think. Is it Echo Soldier is bad against Zaya? I don't know. I don't know what why it's so difficult, but it doesn't feel like they they know how to deal with it. It feels like they just keep getting caught. Like they keep trying to dive past the Zaya. I feel like the Zaya is just getting a ton of energy, and their backline is getting split from their front line. How should you deal with the Zaya comp? I honestly don't have the answer for that right now. Um, we haven't really watched enough of the, either of these compositions to understand like what the real path to victory is. I could talk out of my ass and make something up. But I, I don't know if that's true. I think different DPI. I think Tracer. I think Tracer. Because Zaya doesn't really help you with Tracer. I think Tracer would be good. I think if you played Tracer Soldier against the Zaya. I don't. 
I don't know if I like the Echo versus Desire because I think the bubbles really mess with how Echo wants to play, like with the sticky bombs and the the focusing beam. I feel like a lot of your damage can get mitigated. You don't have that like execution po uh, power that you have usually. Do you always make something up? Yeah, kinda. But this one, I genuinely have no. I I don't actually have the answer. I don't think. It was really weird to me that MYXL had so much success playing the Zaya composition and then they came out and didn't play it on defense. Maybe they don't like it on defense. Oh jeez, that's ridiculous. They're so grouped up, I guess. Look at this. Everybody's got to stay in here on like the, the Soldier 76 heal. 76 damage gets mitigated too. Yeah, but 76 has more consistent damage. You could maybe play Tracer Echo. Or maybe just Tracer Genji and hard dive against the Zaya. I don't know. I don't know. I guess we'll find out when we see more people play it, right? Like, who is the team that is playing the Zarya the most? Dallas Fuel? I guess we'll, we'll get a look when we see more teams play against the Dallas Fuel. Like, the Gladiators were doing pretty well against it, right? In the, in the Gladiators Dallas match? It was going well until it wasn't. But even then, like, I think Dallas was very close to winning the first two maps that they played as well, so... Hack that Zaya, no bubble? Z no, that's, that's not a good idea at all. Because hacking Zaya, she gets a bubble one second later, right? You don't stay hacked for long enough. Zaya, yeah, the Zaya came out and then kind of rolled. Like, I agree. Like, I think there is definitely weaknesses. Like, any time in which uh, you need to get, as I said, positioning and high ground, Zaya is not good. So maybe, honestly, Zaya is the best comp on a point like this in King's Row. Does Doofus count as Zaya? I don't think so at all. Shoot the bubble and get rid of it faster. Ah, I see you are every ranked teammate I've ever played with. <laughs> Good beat by Gangnam Jin. How does Proper die? Let's go back and watch this because this is a big fight. So the nano, they he's gonna visor, so there's the nano visor. Oh, good play by Sam to get out of the way. Actually mitigated the whole thing. That was actually so well played by Sam. Even though Sam dies, like you take that trade 100% of the time. Maybe the beat was a little too early, but I think he's just making sure that he doesn't die. Yeah, Violet's, Violet's beat doesn't get onto... Violet's beat doesn't hit proper. Let's have a look at this. Why not? It's impossible to see. We don't really know why it happens, but... Sorry, the beat didn't get hit, uh, didn't hit proper. And then once they lose that damage, Kellen gets the primal, lives long enough to get the primal, and then, yeah, it's just, just too hard to follow through. So yeah, that proper death was a big one because proper had visor as well. If proper was able to pop the visor at that point, he would have been fine, but good execution by MYXL on him. Absolutely on the table here for New York. I think they really brought things together at the last moment. Feels like Sam didn't get that much value on the Echo. Yeah, I, I think it's just a, a a result of the um of the Zarya play, uh, at least on like part of it. Like, because Sam dominated in the first point, right? Like he was getting positioning, even on the first point attack, right? Uh, in overtime, he was getting high value with the sticky bombs, but as soon as they got into like the streets phases, it felt like he wasn't able to get that that a level of impact. We'll see if they decide to change anything up on D, right? Because maybe they're going to be expecting this Zarya look with the Reaper. Um, yeah, you would have to expect that they're going to come out with the Zarya Reaper if you're the Shock. So we actually do see an adaptation from the Shock here. They played this. They put Sam onto the Soldier. Yeah, you're going to see Reaper here for Sam. Yep, and then uh. Okay, so proper is going to play the soldier, so they're not going to be playing the Zarya. When they release the view, do you think they have pass matches on them? It, 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 we don't know what they're doing with the replay viewer. Like they haven't really talked too much about it. I asked about it, and they said it is unlikely to be coming out for public use, at least anytime soon. I would love it. It would be. I think it's such an it's such a cool tool to give people. So we'll see. Never say never. Yeah, 
But you're not public, then they give it to you. Okay, so, but if they gave it to me, they gave it to me and it's not public, then I can't make content out of it, right? I can't personally use it because that's pretty unfair to people, right? That I am one of the few people that have access to it and then I make content off it. That's not fair. As much as it'd be great for me, it's not fair to everyone. Um, so I would never really make content with it unless it was public. Obviously, I've done that in the past where I had access to the VODs earlier, but everyone had access to it eventually. Like, it was like two days earlier I got access to it or something like that. So it's not a big deal. Uh, but yeah. I have it? Yeah, so much. Yeah, just give it to me. Just, just hook me up. Give me your account. You know, account sharing, they don't mind. What if only Cust had access? Yeah, yeah, just give it only to me. But like, yeah, like, I've asked about it. Like, I've been asking about it in going into preseason, going thing. Every opportunity I've had to ask about it, I, I have. They, they gave up me some, like, copium, like, a month ago where they're like, there's potential that it might potentially come through. And I, and I got super excited. And then they, they took away my hopes and dreams. Because, like, the thing that I used to love doing about in these VOD reviews is looking at things that maybe you wouldn't have caught on the broadcast and stuff like that and like extra things and being able to look from person's perspectives and get an idea of like how individual people are playing but you know it is what it is this season is, is scuffed as fuck uh for many other reasons as well so What do you think would be the counter to the Zaya? I'm not 100% sure yet, as I said. Um, I haven't... I think there are certain maps where Zaya isn't good. Maybe with a really cool... The, the only thing that I could think that would work against the Zaya, because I think this, like, middle ground where you're playing your own Soldier Reaper, I think it just doesn't do... Because the Winston doesn't do as well against the Zaya, because the Zaya can, like, hold space, right? And, like, that kind of stuff. So is sort of forced to go in in situations if you're going to play the Winston. So I'm thinking if you were going to play the Winston against the Zaya or dive against the Zaya, you need to hard commit to it. So I'd rather almost see like a Tracer Reaper or like Tracer Genji and just fucking go ham in the paint and everyone goes fast. Even play like a Lucio Moira and shit like that. I don't know. Just like outpace the Zaya. But it feels like if you try and play the Winston against the Zaya in this situation, you they get more passive value than you. Uh, than you are. So, and it's all about like how well can you execute the dives versus it. Brawl? Yeah, maybe the brawl would work out against the Zaya comp. That's, a, that's an interesting shout. Just fucking run over the Zaya. But the Reaper might roll you, but it could work. So Nano Visor to hold the fight. But that's Nano Visor, right? Once again, Myeongbong used Nano. Sorry, well, say, let's go back. They Nano the Zaya, and Kellen gets slept by Finn. That's so bad. They really needed. They really needed that Nano. Like, if anything, they would have been. I guess the Nano triggered the Nano Visor. But if they had saved it for their own Nano Visor, they'd probably just straight win the first point. All right. So this will probably be the last fight coming up. Do you think Prob is the most hyped player coming in as a uh, as a rookie C so far and now? I think the entire runaway team coming in for the Vancouver Titans in 2019 was hyped up to similar levels. But I would say as an individual, probably. I guess there have been other players that had that same level of hype uh, that didn't live up to it, like, you know, Flower for the MYXL. Alarm was big, yeah. Everyone knew Alarm was going to be sick. Dude, how did MYXL win this? Whoa, 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 whoa. How did MYXL win this? So Gangnam Jin dies with the beat. Is this just getting confident? Oh, yeah. Proper got a little... Did Proper not get the beat either? I actually think Proper trolled. Does he not get the beat? Yeah, Violet beat doesn't hit him. Proper kind of trolled. If they just played smarter and just play to clear the point, they probably just win. Good boot by Violet onto the, the Death Blossom. Gangnam Jin's coming back with the beat. Proper is the problem. You heard it here first, chat. Proper's the worst player in the league. <laughs> also, I actually remember this. This is also bad by the San Francisco Shock. This was... This, in my opinion, was desperate. Like... I think they would have been way better just nano the Winston in, 
Force out the beat? Because Gangnam Jin has been dropping the beat when a fly flies past him. If they had just nanoed collusion, they would have beated, and then the fight would have broken down and it would have been chaotic. Sam would have got a better uh, Death Blossom. By just speed boost, nano, re Death Blossom, you're giving MYXL, they have every single answer. MYXL literally has every single uh, thing in their, like, it, like, it was so telegraphed that Gangnam Jin beated before it even started, right? If they had just played it like a little bit more tempered and sort of staggered out some of their ultimates, I think they would have been fine because they had good ults. Uh, so I think that might have been a, a little bit too presumptuous by the San Francisco Shock just tr hoping that it would work. Seemed like a late re-engage. Well, they had to late re-engage because they needed to regroup. But obviously it's a not an ideal situation, but I feel like they committed to it. Like on top of that as well, like, they could have easily just not engaged there. They only need to win one fight, right? We're in overtime. They only need to win one fight. They took a disadvantageous fight to fight for the first point. If they had just held this choke with those ultimates, they have they have Nano, they have Death Blossom. But now all of a sudden, because they took that fight, Finn needs to switch to Moira. Sam has to switch... Um, oh, wait, sorry. Kalush has to switch to Doomfist. They just, like... It just felt rushed. You know what I mean? They they just need to win one fight, and they didn't need to pa like panic do that anymore, and they didn't even get to touch the point, right? Why are they not contesting the fight? Well, I think they just didn't get close enough. Get them signed to learn and improve. Yeah, like that was that was definitely a mistake made by the MYXL. Like as much as it's cool that MYXL won this map. I think the shock made a lot of mistakes. I think they, I think they learned about the Zaya composition and how they want to deal with it. Like you can see their adaptations that they were playing, where Sam went to his own Reaper and stuff like that against the Zaya. You can see that they're trying to work that out, and then obviously some mistakes with their ultimates, and that's what cost them a map. And that goes back to what we're saying of like as much as we say Shock is probably one of the best teams in the West right now, they are getting challenged by MYXL. They drop a map against MYXL, which which makes you wonder a little bit, right? How are they going to do when they play against Dallas Fuel? or the LA Gladiators, and we'll find out this weekend. Losing is learning. <laughs> Don't tell Matt. And why excel greater than Houston? No, well, Houston got a map as well. The other maps are not close. Yeah, and that's it. Like, Shock is definitely, like, I consider that map a blip on the radar. Some people want to hold that against the Shock of being like, oh, they're so bad. Like, I just think they played... I just think they made a bunch of mistakes. Um, and you can hold that against them, but you can't be like, oh, Shock don't know how to play against the Zaya composition. They're going to get hard countered by Dallas Fuel. Like, I don't think we have enough. I don't think that's there's enough information in that one map to justify that. Kevlar, thank you for the seven months. Happy seven months. COVID finally got me, so Twitch it is for the next five days. Hey, I hope you do okay. Rest up. Look after yourself. Was that MYXL's best map of the season? Yeah, I can, I can see that. I like the adaptation of Into the Zaya. Both these teams have been able to do it. Uh, Proper was able to do some pretty impressive stuff with it, but it looks like it's good for one, you know, in many cases. Cross, you'll find a way as always. Yeah, we'll see. So we're going to get Mira Comps, except Yaki's going to play the Genji. I think against Winston Tracer, I do not like the Genji. I like, I feel like Genji was good when everyone was playing like Doomfist and Zyre and stuff like that. But when you're playing, Winston's just so good against Genji, I feel like. That is just, I don't know why people are still trying to force that Genji. Especially on a map like this, where it's like high ground, I don't think is as important. Like, I think Tracer's really fucking good on this map. Like, you can justify Genji for me on like Dorado and stuff like that. Where Tracer gets sort of like caught out where you can't take high. Oh, Tr yeah, it goes Tracer. Yeah. But like, and this is like a thing for me. It's like, why would Yaki walk out Genji, right? Like he's like, oh, I got counted. They're playing proper Kilo. And you know, Kalouj has been pretty much one tricking Winston. Like why walk out of spawn playing Genji? Like, you know, you, you got to know what to expect at this point. It'll be the shark in control of the point. I wonder what Yaku was expecting comp wise from San Francisco that had a Oh, good point by Mitch. Mitch literally just said that. I think Mitch and Matt did a really good job of highlighting Matt, uh, things this weekend. Um, they had a lot of really good stuff, so much respect to those guys. This really affects where New York take their fights, Matt. Oh, yeah, and I mean, you see the biotic grenade on the floor. Proper gets the dude. Proper is just in a good spot. Kellen gets right in his face. 
How is he alive? What did just happen? What was the tracer doing? Prop, are you good? <laughs> oh, sorry, Killer. Yeah, it was Killer fine. M Mitch and Matt's cast of the LA Gladys and Dallas Eye was fucking amazing. Yeah. It's probably the most go-to casting I watched it. Yeah. They, they just... I feel like a lot of people just like think of Matt as like the shit poster and Mitch is the guy that likes to yell into the mic and have great like analogies. But they actually do such a good job of analyzing the games as well. That I think a lot of people over overlook. Yeah, I mean, you can credit Mjumbong for keeping Kellen alive inside that bubble and then obviously expensing the Nano. Um, yeah. Didn't Glad's lose him up to MYSL also? Yeah. Glad's have definitely not looked flawless either. Here though, on Oasis, it's kind of in back and forth. Flora gets hit with a biotic grenade, he will get taken out. Also, this is something that I saw a lot more recently. Is this like a new thing that people have been doing? I have never seen people start doing this until recently. They do the same thing with Echo Sticky Bombs, where they are putting the the delayed damage next to the character and then throwing and then shooting him as it's about to blow up. I feel like I haven't really seen many people do this in Owl. Like, obviously, it's been a tech that people have done, but I feel like it's becoming a lot more popular as of late. Because I saw Yaki do this a couple of times. I saw Proper do it on Echo. And there's someone else who I saw do it. So. Because I think that's fine, Dad. Yeah. Like, it, it makes sense. I just feel like I haven't really seen it. Gangnam Jin! Dude, I think that. How many times has Gangnam Jin beated? After losing someone and then just gets counterbeated by Violet. Dabio, thank you very much for the 10 months. Gangnam Jin Lucio equals elite. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Still works. It's sick. Yeah, as I said, I'm not saying it's a new tech. I just feel like I haven't seen our players utilize it before, but I'm starting to see a lot more people do it. Like, I haven't, I haven't seen someone do that in out and like what, like especially consistently. They come back in with a vengeance here. Very, very, very one -sided. Great kiting by the shock for the visor, yeah. But it, like, it was kind of... Flora is forced to use that visor into a disadvantageous situation because they didn't have many other resources, right? Gonna play the Zarya. Yaki, gonna play the Reaper. I like this setup from... When was the last Ana Tracer meta or Echo meta? I guess that's a good point, right? Hey, Dino. Yeah, like, I guess we haven't really seen people... When was the last time Ana was, like, super prevalent meta? Like, double bubble? But even then, like... Yaki wanted to match on the Tracer, but... There was just no impact. I mean, they're in a. I mean, we've seen them play that comp already against uh, the shock in that matchup, and it just doesn't work out. I'm more interested in how this uh, goes as well. I believe proper on the echo this time. So we saw, I believe it was uh, Sam on the echo, and then proper. All right, so MYXL is going to be like, fuck it, let's just play Zaya Reaper. And this is a good point for the Zaya Reaper, I think. Like, I think it's the same, it's what I was talking about. It's a linear map with not a lot of high grounds. So the Zaya can sort of act as that pseudo frontline. So Shock are going to be have to be the ones that dive. So as long as MYXL are in a good position and Kellen can protect them, get some energy, they'll be good. Why did Kellen bubble himself there? This is a... Like, literally, this comes back to the fact that Kellen just bubbled himself for no reason back then. And, also, and that's one of the things I think Hanbin does best on the Zaya. Hanbin has nerves of steel with the bubbles. I, I, I'm just watching him walk around with two bubbles, and I'm like, dude, I would have used that a bubble for energy ages ago. That was a good bubble. Look at that, they're just trying to run away from Kellen. And Kellen gets slapped. Yeah, this is what I was saying. Like, Proper does it in the, Yeah, like, we see it twice in one match. I Because I remember, so I saw Yakido. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's a cool tech. I've seen that before. And then, yeah, and then Pel Proper did it on Echo. And I was like, is this a thing that people are just uh, just recently starting to popularize everyone doing? It's a situation where the, the shock, they know that the... Zaya might unironically be good versus Zaya comps. Seen a lot of duplicates. To counter grabs with immortality frames or own grabs and effective with Skyblade. Yeah, like, I actually think 
If I was guessing of where the meta's gonna go, I think we're gonna see a lot more Zaya. Cause I think Apex gonna come out and play Zaya. If I was a betting man, I actually don't know. I haven't seen their scrims and I haven't heard much about their scrims. But if I was a betting man, I think they're gonna come out and play Zaya. You meant Echo. Oh, well, thanks, Johnny. That really helps. But I think Zaya is like I think Zaya is gonna be meta, and we're gonna see a lot more Zaya, Zaya, Zaya on Zaya matchups. I don't think I love the Echo versus the Zaya. Like I think it has some. Maybe if we end up in mirrors, I like the Echo. But I don't like the Echo with the. Uh... Wait, how does he get to a hundred charge? What? Double bubble? He hasn't used his second bubble yet. He's only used one bubble. Like, and then he uses the second one, he gets to 100. He shouldn't be able to get to 100 on a copy. Can someone clip that for me? I'll, I'll send it. I'll, I'll report it in. Someone get me a clip of what I just said. It copies charge, doesn't it? It shouldn't. It, that, that absolutely should not be a thing that it is thing. That's like, that's the weakness of copying Zai is that you shouldn't have energy. Look at the echo go, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> I was right! <laughs> Illegal maneuver. That's a serious. You run it back, chat. Run it back. Alright, Yaki uh, Kalush. Brutal. Wait, where did the where did the grab go? Oh, okay, so caught collusion kill it. I'm just blind. Another good sleep by uh, uh by uh Finn though. chance of resuscitation for New York, but that has definitely gone out the window. Do you expect a lot of ball? No. Uh, I think ball is just very bad in this beta patch. I don't think it's good at all. You, you know, you gotta give credit to New York, though. They did end up taking a map here. Because, like, remember, a big part about the Wrecking Ball composition when you're playing the Tracer Sombra Wrecking Ball that we saw last season is, like, the big reason of that worked is your off tank was able to peel for the back line, but you don't have it a second tank. So Wrecking Ball just... I think Wrecking Ball suffers from the same issue that Sombra f suffers from in Overwatch 2, that there's just too much downtime. There's too much time just running around and not really doing anything. It does. It feels like Overwatch 2 has more consistent skirmishes and stuff like that, rather than just like setting up for that one big dive that we had in Overwatch 1, right? Uh, I think Wrecking Ball might need some reworks in Overwatch 2, but that's it. That's it for the... Um, that's it for the uh, match between San Francisco Shock and New York Excelsior. I wanted to talk about both of these teams. I, we haven't really highlighted them too much at this point. Shock still looks to be that dominant team. They are 4-0, but they are playing the Gladiators this weekend. So that'll be their real test of like, if they dismantle the Gladiators, they have to go to number one. And then it all comes down to, are they going to be able to beat the Dallas Fuel? Uh, so we will see. New York Excelsior has a ways to go. They have good talent, like Yaki plays well, Kellen has good moments, even Myumbong, you know, had some good moments here and there, but their flexibility, and it feels like just their ultimate usage, Gangnam Jin on the Lucio, just, it just didn't feel like that was it. Um, I might be reviewing one more match before we go into this weekend's worth of matches. We'll see. Um, but make sure to like the video if you guys enjoyed it. Leave me a comment below what you guys thought of this match, and if you think Shock is overrated, if you think Proper is overrated, What's wrong with MYXL? Just get, let me know. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more reviews. Love you all, and I'll see you guys next time.